All right, grounding and shielding, can everybody see? Yes. Okay, perfect, thank you. So grounding and shielding, as far as an instrumentation tech is concerned, I, as I say, it's all about making sure we have a, a pure signal. Uh, there are there are some safety concerns when we talk about shielding, uh, grounding and shielding, and that's obviously with equipment we work. Uh, we want everything to be bonded to ground. Uh, we'll be talking about bonding, and we'll be talking about grounding. Um, but to just get us off here, this is these are the objectives that we're going to learn today. Describe the importance of grounding and shielding electronic equipment. Describe the difference between grounding and shielding, because there's definitely a difference. Describe methods for grounding and electronic equipment. And our last one is going to be describe methods for shielding electronic equipment. So we talked about this a little bit, about why grounding is important and why shielding is important. In the big picture, grounding is important for our safety. Um, it provides low resistance path for current to flow in the event of a circuit fault. So if something fails, like a motor or anything that's grounded, it fails uh, because of a current or a short circuit, that short circuit current goes right to ground and not through us. As instrument guys, it's important to become proper uh, because proper grounding and shielding and bonding techniques prevent signal degradation and interferences. And that's what we're trying to get as, as us um, as just workers, we worry about grounding. Uh, with instrumentation, we don't want any signal degradation and interferences with our signal because that could cause plant upsets, which could be very unsafe. And again, it's uh, these interference which affect how our devices operate. And again, accuracy, whatever it is, um, poor signals, accuracy, anything that, that degrades our signal is what we're talking about. So grounding and shielding objective one is grounding, protects us for um, the um, automation system from potential damage due to voltage surges, uh, your voltage fluctuations, uh, our, vo our, our power supply a lot of times is not pure. Uh, lightning, of course, if we have lightning strikes, uh, when I worked at the uh, wastewater treatment plant, every time there was a lightning strike, I might as well just jump in my car and head down because it uh, took out things every time because the, the, the plant was so old that I knew that uh, something would be down, whether it be uh, PLC or, or some equipment. So as soon as there was lightning strike, I just jumped in my truck and off I went. Short circuits, of course, but most importantly, it protects us. So grounding conductors are there to allow misguided electricity to make its way through Earth without going through you. And again, how many times have you seen a cord with that third prong cut off because it's, uh, uh, it's, it's a nuisance and we can't fit our plugs into our receivers, receptacles, so we cut that thing off. But that is what protects us. Grounding and shielding. Shielding uh, contains a source of undesirable interferences that may affect the automation of the control loops. These undesirable interferences may come from adjacent power or control systems. Uh, we don't have a code book that tells us how we're gonna run our wires, but we, we um, jump in and we, we grab the, um, uh, the CEC, Canadian Electrical Code, uh, from the electricians. And what it's saying is that adjacent, uh, you can't run power cables and control cables in the same uh, tray or rack unless they're protected from each other because you'll get some undesirable interferences. Unwanted noise and voltage fluctuations. The shield of uh, cabling helps reduce unreliable or co uh, corrupt signals caused by interferences. And we're gonna talk about those interferences uh, a little later on in, in this uh, presentation. Grounding, grounding some called protective earth is defined as low resistance electrical connection to mother earth by means of well, we pound grounding rods. We also do uh, steel frame of the plant. If you walk into any plant that's got those big steel girders and stuff, every one of those guys is grounded. Everyone has a number two, probably uh, uncladded number two, stranded going into the grounding system, the ground grid under the plant. 
the hull of a ship. This, this, this uh, basically, uh, if you if you're running anything on it on these big ships and things like that, uh, they need to be grounded. All all electricity need to be grounded, and that's the hull of the ship. Uh, and a drilling platform. Grounding is essential. It protects workers and equipment from faults. Provides stability for instrument signals. Grounding provides safety, high frequency noise mitigation, static DC ground reference, lightning protection, high frequency noise mitigation. VFDs, they operate these high frequencies and uh, you can hear them uh, when you walk into an MCC or anywhere there is VFDs operating. And as a result, they emit a high frequency noise signal that can, be, uh, that can affect signals uh, especially instrument signals nearby. We need to provide a low resistance impedance path for this noise to get to ground or it will cause problems for our measuring signals. By ensuring a proper ground network, all noise will travel to the ground and not affect our signal. That's what our hope is. So basically, if we have a grounding system, we have to have so many ohmic value that it, so that, that anything that uh, the high frequency noise and everything is grabbed by that ground and taken to Mother Earth. Best grounding material for these high frequency signals is a branded, a braided strap rather than a round conductor. And even, even a, you never see a solid conductor for ground. Uh, you always see the stranded wire. Normally it's number two, but you also see braided strap and the braided strap a lot of times goes from the doors to the actual cabinets and uh, it's just saying here that a braided strap and a copper strap, to be that exact, is your best ground. DC reference to ground. We all know if we've ever worked on something DC, like our truck or anything like uh, automotive and stuff like that, if you don't have a good ground, if your ground system isn't working, your lights aren't going on and everything else. So DC reference to ground. And a lot of our equipment is DC. So as instrument techs, we work mostly with DC power. Our power supplies are isolated from the AC supply. And I mean completely isolated, even to the ground point, except where it touches Mother Earth. So AC supply by isolating transformers built into our DC supplies. Our standard DC 4 to 20 milliamp signal requires proper static DC reference to ground to maintain its integrity and avoid malfunction. Requirements for proper static ground are as follows. Must have resistance to ground lower than three ohms. Must have isolation transformer and usually built in. This separates the AC from the DC. And, and I've got a couple of diagrams here that shows you that that AC ground and that DC ground are, uh, are, are separate. Lightning. Surges caused by lightning can cause serious damage to life and equipment. Facilities are built in such a way that to eliminate dangers associated with this phenomenon of, of lightning. All metal structures and enclosures are tied into the ground grid to create a safe path for lightning to flow to the earth. Now here's a couple pictures that uh, I, I don't even know, Cole, if you were in my class at the time, I got it from one of these guys from Drayton Valley. Uh, and he's taking pictures of this this uh, plant, and you can see those lightning arrestors or whatever they're called. Um, yeah, so you, I've never ever seen them personally, just from these pictures and stuff like that. But you guys probably have seen them. And again, what it does is just takes that uh, the fact of lightning. If it hits the plant, it takes it straight to ground without doing a lot of damage. Kind of cool arrays. So structural grounding system. So here in the top right corner, you'll see that this is um, this is the structural ground where I've got number twos and it's coming from every uh, beam, metal beam into ground. And normally uh, it's it's um, buried two to four feet underground. Um, I was on a job at Suncor, and they were de uh, they were uh, cutting trenches in the cement and for water to flow out and get, get rid of the water instead of standing water on the floors. 
and they were cutting down through this and I go there the, the second day they were cutting they cut this trench and on either side of the trench there was cut ground wires so these guys were just going ahead and, and, and doing the concrete cutting having no idea that they're actually cutting the grounding grid so I put that job to a halt and we reconnected the, all the grounds and then they were have to be aware that they ever cut a ground that they let us know so that we can have a pure grounding system if I look at the bottom, it's it's pretty uh, messed up as far as clarity. Uh, it just talks about electricity coming in and the and the fence and everything that's grounded. And it's it's better in your in your uh, ILM, um, the picture itself. Uh, it's better in your ILM. So ground rods, so they're uh, they're stainless steel, they're galvanized steel, um, copper clad steel, and then pure copper. And when you pound in a grounding rod, you are expected to get less than 25 ohms. And you can do that measurement right to ground. Yeah, the one, the one uh, uh, figure three on page seven is a little better than the one I'm showing. So uh, at, least, at least you can see what, it's, it's, it doesn't have to be that clear for, to see where the grounding rods are. So grounding grid, bare grounding conductor, minimum of number two AWG, American wire gauge, uh, stranded cable, um, two to four feet below the grade. Here's a typical uh, industrial tie-in. So you can look at all these, uh, all these connections to ground. Um, when we look at this, we can see how important it is and how much cable we use for ground. We've had issues where people are stealing the cable and uh, hopefully they don't steal the, cable, the grounding cable. Uh, but if you get between that, uh, that grounding conductor and earth and you are the path, it's gonna go right through you and uh, good luck on that because uh, there's quite a bit of, uh, of uh, current going to ground. So grounding connection examples, power systems, the secondary side, a protection from primary side by path to ground in case of a short circuit. This protects life. So we're talking about a power system, some sort of transformer. Even on the transformers, your P side or your primary side and your secondary side, their grounds are also um, basically separated until they hit Mother Earth. Um, so this is like a galvanic system where the wires from a primary transformer don't touch any of the wiring system on the secondary except for the ground and that's at, at, at uh, mother earth uh, electrical equipment instrument connecting instrument chassis to ground to protect operators from leaked volts and shielded reduces noise emf interferences and static buildup so those are some of the connections to ground for examples types of grounds we have dirty grounds. Uh, the dirty grounds are affected by spikes, surges, or brownouts. Now these grounds are only, uh, dirty grounds are only uh, deal with AC, alternating current. So AC voltage such as 120, 240, or whatever your voltage is, your supply voltage. When you have uh, uh, AC, you get these things called dirty grounds. High current switching, motors also give us dirty grounds. Lightning. When we have clean grounds, we're talking about DC, isolated from dirty grounds and free from outside interferences. And most of the clean grounds are coming from DC power supplies. So where there's no cycling of power, it's just direct power, direct current. Grounds separated from AC sources are clean grounds. So when I look at this, and this picture here shows you a structural grounds, uh, the top portion of this is all AC, um, you have an MCC, you have three phase switching, all that kind of stuff in the MCC. Um, you have lightning uh, ground rods. And then down below, you will have your instrument grounding, your cable shields, your PLC system grounds, all of those things on your instrument system go to ground. And as you can see, they don't touch each other other than the last step where it goes to Mother Earth. So they are kept separated. Uh, except for that last step where, where it does go to mother ground, which is your main ground. Now these, these grounds are, 
actually bonds, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but that uh, Mother Earth there, when it's grounded to the ground, um, is the only time you'll ever see dirty grounds from AC and clean grounds from DC attached to each other. So all, all throughout your plant or whatever, you won't see uh, AC and DC ground, uh, or you shouldn't. You may see it, but you shouldn't see it. Everything should be uh, on your AC side. Your ground should not be touching your DC ground, except at Mother Earth. Shielding. The purpose of shielding is to contain interferences from other electrical systems. These sig signals are undesirable interferences. Shielding prevents unwanted noise from, uh, from corrupting our instrument signal. So that's the biggest one, for this, what the shields do. Shielding, shields is used to manage electrostatic influences, and that we call that noise. Anything that's EMI, electromagnetic influences, electrostatic influences, any kind of these influences is called noise. And, and if, if we don't have the shields and our, our control cables pick up this noise, or this electrostatic fluence, we get a degraded signal, which we, we don't want. It's not the same as grounding. It has nothing to do with physical safety. It's all about keeping the good signal for a safe operation. Now, uh, it, 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 in some cases, it causes safety issues because we get the wrong readings and, and we get, we get uh, poor signals but it's not the same as the grounding itself with that high current coming to ground. Shielding is just to keep away uh, electrostatic influences. Shielding means um, taking all of your DC shields and connecting them to a common point of reference so there will be no potential between them. It's designed to help eliminate crosstalk. Now, crosstalk is going to be uh, uh, different signals on different communication uh, wires because uh, they're all ran in the same, they can be run in the same um, tray or whatever. And crosstalk is a is, um, little bit of signal or in, uh, electrostatic influences between the cables running in parallel. What's the difference? Grounding and shielding work together to protect the integrity and safety of our instrument systems. The terms are not interchangeable, but they serve as common good. So when we talk about grounding and shielding, it's... it's as I say, it's, they're totally different. Electro, electrical coupling is a transfer of wanted electrical energy from one circuit to another, and it's called crosstalk. Crosstalk can occur in two ways. Capacitive, so essentially a capacitor formed by two cables running parallel. Each one of them is going to be a plate of the capacitor. And if they're very close together, they need a shield so that there's nothing, no... Uh, no joining of these two capacitor plates. Inductive occurs as a current flowing in a nearby power cable changes direction and creates an, a magnetic field. So when there's a change in direction in power cables, you get a magnetic field produced and it expands and collapse, expands and collapse. If you have that um, expansion and collapse of this magnetic field, if you don't have a shield, it will induce inductive uh, signals onto your signal cable. So it says signal cables in the immediate area are affected by the lines of flux generated and created an unwanted current in the signal. And that's called mutual induction. Effective analog and digital signals. Noise, noise, which is any of this EMF or crosstalk or uh, capacitive coupling, inductive, uh, inductive reactants. Uh, noise causes the most dramatic effect on analog signals, so that's our 4 to 20. With our, with our digital signals, on, off, on, off, does not become as bad of a problem with digital, digital signals unless the noise is severe enough to replace or replicate a digital pulse. And a lot of times anything that's uh, inductive coupling and stuff like that won't, won't cause enough uh, signal to give us a, a pulse in the digital system. Noise mitigation, how do we get rid of this noise? There are some things that we can do in order to lessen the effects of noise in our signal. Run cables at right angles. Uh, it's, it, this is pretty hard to do. 
but I'll, I'll you know, in some uh, in some plants I have seen them. So if a control signal has to cross an area where there is parallel power uh, signals or power cables, you cross that that cable tray at 90 degrees. You don't go parallel with it. Copper shielding, of course, braided shields, copper are more effective than uh, foil aluminum ones. But if we look at this braided shield as in copper, again, copper is worth a lot of money and there's a lot of theft uh, along with that copper. So it's just saying that, that the copper is better, but aluminum also, uh, that's, that's what we see most. Avoid ground loops. Uh, this is a big one for us, no shield in the field. So if you've got an instrument cable running to the field, normally, if it's done properly in the field, it's the, the outer clad is stripped back and then you take aluminum foil and, and pull that back also and then wrap that with a tape, with some sort of uh, electrical tape. Because we don't want grounding loops and a grounding loop is if that, uh, if that shield was attached as, as, a, as a shield uh, somewhere in the, in the field, you would get ground loops. And that means that your current, and it, albeit very low, will loop through the wire, through ground and back and continue, continue having uh, the grounding loops. So this avoids ground loops. So there's no path for that current except for at one end. And normally when we, uh, when we ground the shield or bond the shield, it's at the point of the power supply, not in, not out, out in the field. So this is a big one for you and definitely we'll be getting asked questions on that. Twisted wires, reduce inductive coupling. Uh, bonding, objective three. Now I've got an electrical system here and it's also got a, a bulk AC, DC's power supply. Um, it's got D, uh, if you look at that in, right in the middle to the right of the uh, receptacle, it's got uh, DC return to ground. And you can see those grounds that are uh, the return to Mother Earth on that isolated local ground reference. Uh, looking at this, you can just see also some of the cables or the shields are grounded. Uh, but this is mostly AC. So connecting instrumentation equipment to the grounded bed is called bonding. Uh, there's a difference between bonding and grounding. Grounding only happens at Mother Earth. The rest are called uh, bonds and they bonds to that grounding system. So eliminates local potential differences. If you're bonding, your minimum number 12 AWG green vinyl clad or bare stranded uh, copper cable and your bond to ground is less than 0 0.1 ohm resistance to the grounding bed or the grounding, uh, local grounding reference. The shield must be bonded only at the instrument control panel and not at the transmitter. Again, no, no, field in this, no shield in the field. It's only at the, uh, basically the panel, the control panel, normally where the, the power supply is. Also called single point grounding. Shielding electronic equipment, electromagnetic interference, EMI. Unwanted voltages or current caused by conduction through attached wires, um, non-ionizing radiation, radiation that does not have enough power to remove an electron from an atom. And again, it's like these radio frequencies and a lot of you guys that are out in the field deal with these radio frequencies. Uh, electronic equipment cannot be shielded from EMI, that cabling connection brings. So electronic equipment and cabling must be purchased to minimize EMI. So radiated uh, electromagnetic interference comes in two frequencies. The first one is EMI below the radio frequency range. It's just called EMI and then uh, in the radio frequency range, it's 3 kilohertz to 300 gigahertz. It's called RFI, radio frequency interference. So if this, if this uh, basically is not, if, if your signals aren't shielded properly, you're going to get some of this 
um, radio frequencies and that could degrade our 4 to 20 milliamp signal. EMI can be reduced by surrounding sensitive electronics with high magnetic permeability material, which allows the magnetic lines of flux to be drawn into the material instead of affecting the electronics. RFI can be reduced by surrounding the electronics with a conductive enclosure bonded to ground. And a lot of our, a lot of our enclosures are metal and you bond them to ground, it gets rid of these RFIs. And that is it, gentlemen, for grounding and bonding and why we do it. Um, you guys that use a SCADA packs, that's that RFI, right? And and uh, we always we always ground those boxes, and they're using usually metal clad boxes for that uh, purpose to ground that RFI out of there. All right, I'm going to end this show. I'm going to stop my recording.